Welcome. Today I want to talk about CBD, what you need to know. My name is Olivia Venker and I'm also known in the Young Living world as Dr. Ollie. And today I want to really talk about a very important topic, something you have been hearing about on TV, something you have been reading about in magazines. CBD, what is it? What's the difference between CBD and marijuana? So all of those things are going to discuss today that you have a basic idea of what CBD is and also why we would want to mix CBD isolates with essential oil. What's behind that idea? Why do we call this smart CBD? So today you're going to learn all that. First, I need to let you read this disclaimer. My best friend once told me, Ollie, you don't have to understand an essential oil. Once you use it, your body will know what to do with it. And if you say something like that to a scientific minded brain, this is what's going to happen. So how can that be? How can I process this information that I could just take something I don't know about it or I know very little about it and my body would know what to do with it. So I want you to keep that thought because I want to come back at the end of this lecture and talk again about this. So what are my qualifications to talk about CBD? Well, I have been using CBD for a long time, ever since it was legal. And here you see my kitchen lab and I would like to thank my wife at this point for letting me use or abuse the kitchen every once in a while. And I have spent a lot of time figuring out how to blend essential oils with CBD and how to best dissolve CBD in what kind of oils. And so I have a little bit an idea about that. So the first thing we want to talk about it, what is CBD? Well, CBD stands for cannabidiol. And cannabidiol comes from a plant called cannabis. Now, for hundreds of years, the name cannabis has been used synonymously with marijuana, and that's not right. The name cannabis is the name for the plant. And depending on how you grow the plant, and I'm going to show you a little bit more in a few minutes, you're going to get either marijuana or you're going to get hemp. And when you get hemp, you might get more CBD than when you grow marijuana, which also produces a little bit of CBD, as you're going to see. Now, CBD has no psychoactive effects. In other words, it doesn't make you cuckoo in the brain. And it can be used in humans and animals, and you will see why it can be used. And it's a true treasure from God and nature that we have at our disposal today. So where does it come from? Here you see a picture how real hemp really looked like. It was huge. It was tall. You see this farmer in front of it. Right? But when you drive today across or past hemp fields, they look slightly different, and there's a reason for that. But that's how the original hemp looked like. Now, when you look at the two different plants, which is hemp or marijuana, you see a distinct difference. Hemp seems to be taller, thinner, has a little less leaves, whereas marijuana is more dense, is smaller, and has these huge amount of leaves. So what is the difference between the two? They both come from a plant called cannabis. And we look at those plants, we look at them a little closer after one or two months after they start growing in the fields, we start seeing some differences. We see that the males have something we call pollen sacs, and they sit where the branches kind of go off. And when you look at the females, they have a similar structure but they're not really pollen sacs. And on the end, they have like little feathers. We call them pistils. And those feathers are full of glue. So when the pollen is released from the pollen sac of the males and flies through the air, 
and reaches those little sticky feathers, it gets stuck there, and that's how the female plant gets fertilized. I've been confusing cannabis and marijuana for over 100 years because that's all they thought about when they talked about cannabis. But cannabis, depending on how it's grown, it will end up being hemp or it will end up being uh, marijuana. And the only difference is like, again, I probably is one thing to explain. So if you're a farmer and you take seeds like a plant, you go in your field, you put out the seeds and roughly 50% of your seeds are female and 50% of your seeds are male. So you basically put out, the plants start growing and then, you know, the male develop pollen sacs with pollen and the female develop another little kind of organ that has a little feather on it that is sticky. So when the pollen starts flying, it gets stick to this little sticky thing and then the female gets fertilized. So what do females that get fertilized? They create babies, right? So it's not different in the plant world than in the human world. So here you have a, a plant that creates a baby and the plant is the same like a human. So the plant puts all the energy into that baby. And so she's growing that baby and that baby in a cannabis plant is a hemp seed at the end of the day, if you grow hemp. Right? So here you have you males and females, so they do whatever they do at night, right? We don't see what they do. And then um, you get your, your fertilization and you get your baby and the, the female puts all the energy and, you know, it, it creates this hemp seed, which is really, really healthy to eat. Else, you know, this is hemp oil. But what happened if you go into the field and you remove all the males? Well, there's no more pollen to be released. And the female really gets frustrated because she doesn't get fertilized. So what is she doing? She's thinking about how could I catch some of those very, very few pollen that come from far, far away. And she produces more glue to put on her little feathers on those pistils. And the glue is resin. You've figured out that when you touch the resin from a tree, for example, that it's very, very sticky. And so the cannabis plants start producing more and more resin. And that resin becomes more and more aggressive and changes the composition. And hence, we're getting more and more THC. And that's how marijuana is created. So all you need to do is to remove all the males and have the females be, so to speak, sexually frustrated. And when they're frustrated, they produce more resin, more aggressive resin. And that resin is full of THC precursors and THC being the abbreviation for marijuana. And this is how you get marijuana. So where are those resins produced? Well, the resins are produced in little structure we call trichomes. And they look like little white mushrooms. And in fact, some of the leaves in the butt of the cannabis flowers are so full of those little white mushrooms that we call them sugar leaves because they look like somebody has put some powdered sugar on them. And so those trichomes are producing resin and depending on whether the plant is pollinated or not, it's more CBD or more THC. And here is a summary of what you see. So when you have males and females in the field, and you see this with plants like cannabis sativa, cannabis ruderalis mostly. Then you have a very CBD rich resin. CBD rich means in the old time at least two to three percent. And you are very low in THC. Legally, you have to be below 0.3 percent dry weight. Now, if you remove all the males, then you have female female and you get this kind of frustration going on, this more aggressive resin being produced, and the plants that are being used mostly to produce this aggressive resin are being marijuana. These are cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and also cannabis ruderalis. And now there seems to be a new form, a new species called cannabis rasta. And the resin is really THC rich or marijuana rich. It can be as high as 40%. And the plant is very low in CBD, typically less than 1%. So how do these plant components work in your system? And in the last 20 years, we've discovered an entire system we now call the endocannabinoid system. And it's a bad word for it because this system has existed for thousands of years. It's not new. And it's not specifically here to deal with cannabis compounds. This system can deal with any compound of any plant. And so you're going to learn a little bit more about that in the following minutes. So let's look at what we call cannabinoids 
And these are the three types that you can have. You can have cannabinoids coming from phyto, meaning plants. You can have cannabinoids coming from your own body. Yes, your own body produces cannabis-like substances. And we call them endocannabinoids because endo meaning from within, from within your own body. And then you can have synthetic cannabinoids that are created in the laboratory. So let's go through these three types of cannabinoids. So the first ones come from the plant. That's why we call them phytocannabinoids, right? They're produced by plants. We look at them as being keys that will go into a keyhole. It's like a ligand, this is the medical term for that, will go into a receptor. That's the scientific term for the keyhole. And if you have the right ligand that fits into the right receptor, something will happen or it will not happen. Either it activates something or it blocks something. And today we know that we have at least 100 to 200 of these phytocannabinoids in the plant cannabis. Whether you grow them as hemp or you grow them as marijuana, you're going to get slightly different cannabinoids in slightly different amounts. And you see here they have all kind of different names like CBN, CBG, CBD, THC, CBC, and so on. And right now I'm not just working with CBD, I'm also working with CBG, CBN, and I'm waiting for my first load of CBC to be delivered. Now let's look at those that are produced inside your body. These are the endocannabinoids. And your body produces multiple of those. Today we know that your body produces about eight of them. But the two most important ones seems to be anandamide and 2-AG. And anandamide is a word that comes from the old Sanskrit and means blissful. So anandamide basically means your bliss hormone, the hormone that will make you relax, take away anxiety, make you calmer. And you heard that CBD makes you calmer. And now you can make the connection between anandamide, the bliss hormone, and CBD. And last but not least, we need to look at synthetic cannabinoids. And synthetic cannabinoids are being produced in the labs. And I wrote here they're really, really dangerous because we know that some of these synthetic compounds bind to these receptors at a strength 100 to 1,000 times stronger than the natural plant compounds. And we know that they can cause terrible side effects. So you should leave your fingers away from synthetic compounds. Our body is not speaking synthetic. Our body speaks natural. And the problem today is that often your CBD products that you purchase on the internet and you don't know where they come from have been tainted with synthetic compounds to make you feel that they work better. So they might be very, very dangerous. So let's talk a little bit about receptors. So we talked the first part of this endocannabinoid system where the lichens, the cannabinoids, and now let's talk about the second part of the system, the receptors, the keyholes. So if you put the right plant compound into the right receptor, then something will happen or something will block. So let's look at the mailman here. So that's a cartoon from my book, The Power of CBD and Essential Oils. And once you put a letter that fits into the mailbox, the mailbox gets a little heavier and will push down through what we call the cell membrane. And then once it does that, by changing certain things inside the cell membrane, it will release a whole action of what we call signaling pathway. And that's demonstrated by this row of domino stones. And on the right, you see the structure, the actual structure of CB receptors, cannabinoid receptors. So in the beginning, everybody saw it. it's all about CB1 and CB2 receptors. But in the meantime, we learned a little bit more. So let's have a closer look at how our nerves are working, either in the brain, we call them neurons, or outside in the peripheral nervous system. And you see here that in the beginning, there's this big body of the nerve, and it's the nerve cell, and it has little hands that go out. We call those dendrites. And those dendrites are here to receive signals from other nerves that are traveling through the nerves. And so they receive the signal, they bring it into the cell, body and you see this yellow piece in the middle that's the nucleus that's basically the motherboard the computer and that's where everything is getting computed and then once the command is recreated it goes out through that long tail we call an axon and in the end of the tail you have again like a hand these little pieces with something we call terminal buttons 
So when we put these nerves together, they don't really touch each other. When you look under the microscope very, very closely, you're going to see they have a little gap. And we call this the synaptic gap. So when we look at a little bit how the synaptic gap looks like, you have the incoming nerve coming from above. We call this the presynaptic part. Then you have this gap in between, which we call the synapse. And then we have basically the postsynaptic part of the nerve of the dendrite again from the next nerve. And the incoming part is called the terminal button and the outgoing part is called the dendrite. So when you look at very closely what happens, we have a bunch of receptors on this presynaptic nerve ending, the terminal button. And when certain compounds go to the right receptors, they're going to release these little bubbles that you see and those little bubbles cross the synaptic gap and go to the postsynaptic part of the next nerve. And those little bubbles contain what we call neurotransmitters. Compounds, chemical compounds formed in your body that are intended to basically transfer an electrical signal chemically to the next nerve to recreate another electric signal. Now, when you look at this endocannabinoid system, it's way more complicated than that because you see in the postsynaptic part of the next nerve, there are little factories. And when you look close at these factories, they produce an endomite or 2-AG, those two very important endocannabinoids I talked about. And then those use little boats, little transporters to be brought across the watery substance backwards to the presynaptic ending. And that's where they're going to find some of these receptors that are going to react to an endomide and to AG and also a little bit to CBD. And then they may or may not release some of these bubbles and neurotransmitters. And this is how this whole system works. Now, the fantastic thing about this system is you have nerves everywhere in your brain, in every organ, in the skin, along your gut. I mean, everything has to do with nerves. And you have in every nerve ending, you have this kind of factory, you have this mechanism. So the fantastic news is here, your body has been traded to really react in a fraction of a second to any need that it has to balance itself out. And that's where CBD and other cannabinoids play a huge role. It's such a miraculous system. Now let's look at these receptors. So we have the CB1 and CB2 receptors, CB1 being mostly in the brain and along the spinal cord, but also in other places, and CB2 being mainly in the gut, in the thymus, in the immune cells, and many other systems. But we know of many, many other receptors that we had called different names, and we thought they were completely separate. And we know today that they all play part in this endocannabinoid system. And so it almost looks like we have measles. There are receptors all over our body that have to do with the system. So we talked about the first part, the ligands, the second part, the receptors, and now let's talk about the third part, the enzymes. So we have enzymes that help to construct certain compounds, and we call them construction enzymes. Whereas on the other hand, we have demolition enzymes, enzymes that help break down certain compounds in our body. And so we have the construction crew and the demolition crew. Now, CBD is not that strong of a binder or ligand to the receptors. Its main action seems to work by inhibiting the demolition crew. That demolition crew that is intended to break down your own cannabinoid called an endomide. And when that happens, you have more an endomide bliss hormone in your body. So CBD has a very indirect way to work in your body by increasing an endomide and therefore giving you more bliss hormone. Now the fourth part in this whole system are the little transporters. So we know that all these compounds are mostly fat soluble compounds, these cannabinoids, including the ones you produce yourself, and they have to cross watery sections between the nerves, for example, and we need little boats to get them across. So now you really know all the four pieces, the ligands, the receptors, the enzymes, and the transporters. Now, why do we have such a complicated system? Because all of that 
is intended to get you homeostasis. Homeostasis is a concept of balancing, balancing your body needs. So if you have something that doesn't work well enough, then hopefully homeostasis will improve the function of that something. And if you have something that is in overdrive, like for example, autoimmune diseases, then homeostasis is intended to bring that down and calm it down. So now you may understand the health benefits of CBD and why CBD is known to give health benefits to the brain, the eyes, the heart, the gut, the bones, even the immune system and many, many more. Why? Because we have this endocannabinoid system within the nerves and the nerves endings and the starts of the new nerves all over our body, everywhere you go, in every organ system. And this system can be brought into homeostasis by substances like CBD within in a fraction of a second because that's how our body is intended to work it's an absolutely miraculous system and so now you may understand all these wellness and fitness and beauty benefits even of CBD so the next question is is CBD dangerous and here we'll look at a analysis of multiple studies where they look at the safety profile of CBD in humans and in animals and the most common side effects of CBD include tiredness of course we understand because we increase anandamide which is something that makes you calm it can also cause diarrhea and it can cause a change in appetite and body weight we know that CBD, in order to be broken down, it uses enzyme systems in the liver. And those enzyme systems may be exactly the same enzyme systems that are being needed to break down certain medications. So when you take CBD together with certain medication, you might either increase the blood levels of these medications or decrease them. If you increase them, you might be overdosed with them and that might be dangerous. And if you decrease them, then you might not have enough blood levels to have the effect of the medication. So I urge you to talk to your healthcare provider to make sure that you're not taking any medication that interferes with the breakdown of CBD. Now, the other problem we have in the market right now is the absolute chaos of CBD products. When you go online and you order any CBD products from the internet, you have typically no clue what you're ordering. And it's really bias beware because up to 85% of the products, cannabis products, whether it's CBD or marijuana, contain pesticides, solvents, herbicides, and other contaminants. And now, especially dangerous synthetic cannabinoids, 85%. This was found in studies, some of them conducted by the National Institute of Health. Now, the other problem is that about 70% of the products are mislabeled. 43% are underlabeled, 26% are overlabeled, and some products have zero CBD. So you paid a lot of money for nothing. Now, the worst case that they found is that something that's supposed to have 2% CBD had a whopping 40% THC in it, marijuana. So again, companies are just completely mislabeling, and I would hope that the FDA would concentrate on finding these banned companies and get them off the market so we have safe products to take. Now, seed to seal quality is not just important for our essential oils. Seed to seed quality is extremely important these days for CBD. And this is why I really love to be with this company, Young Living, that has a seed to seal quality both on the essential oil side, but also on the hemp side. Now, something I need to talk about is the entourage effect. Entourage is a French word and means the surrounding. So let's say you're the president of the United States, you have a press corps, you have your secret service, you have your advisors, a whole bunch of people, your family, all of that is your surrounding, your entourage. So let's assume you want to go and bring up the piano to the first floor. If you're alone, that's a pretty hard undertaking and it's going to be difficult. It will take you quite some while. But if you call your entourage, your friends. They all will help you carry the piano up there and it's going to be done like in a couple minutes without any sweat. And so the same thing is also valid for the plants. So if you take the cannabis plant, it has plenty of terpenes and cannabinoids in there and other substances. They all work together. And so you have this entourage effect that really works well. So when you look at CBD products, you're going to see full spectrum, broad spectrum, and isolates. So full spectrum means you took the entire plant material and you're just extracting whatever you can. But that really doesn't taste very well. It has chlorophyll in there and some terpenes that really smell bitter and taste bitter. So most companies will take them out and then make a full spectrum into a broad spectrum. But if you continue to remove compounds, 
over and over and over again until you're left over with the single compound called cannabidiol or CBD, then you have a true isolate. Now, a lot of people don't like to take isolates because they say, rightly so, that we just lost the entourage effect we just talked about. But we at Young Living, we have something else. We have essential oils and essential oils are full of entourage effect. They have all these terpenes, monoterpenes, biterpenes, sesquiterpenes. You have heard these terms before. And all of these work together in order to improve and enhance the way these plants extracts work. So if you take a CBD isolate and you remix it with the entourage effect of targeted essential oils, and I say targeted like you could, for example, imagine that you mix a CBD isolate with an oil like lavender, who you know is also calming to your body. And now you have a very smart spectrum essential oil CBD mix that will help you with a calming environment. And so you can go to a bunch of different essential oils and create your smart spectrum CBD essential oil mixtures. And that's exactly what Young Living has done through a company called Nature's Ultra, which is part of Young Living. So at the end, when you really connect all the dots of everything you have heard so far, when you look at the plants and the best plant extracts and plant juices are essential oils, and you look at CBD, another plant extract, and you look at the human body with all these receptors that are upregulating, downregulating, meaning they're multiplying or they're going away depending on the need of the minute or the second even. And then you see all these receptors and you see the connection to what I all talked about, how these plant materials go to all these receptors, not just CBD, but also these compounds that you find in the essential oil. That's when you get true homeostasis and you get health and wellness and beauty. So when you think about it, God didn't create the planet Earth and all its inhabitants, the animals, the humans, and the plants, just without thinking about it. And the plants have been created not just to be looking nice, to be given to your wife as a bouquet of flowers, to have a nice front yard or backyard, or to be taken as healthy food to nourish us. No, plants have a completely other function too. Maybe the most important function of plants is to hit all these receptors in your body and to help your body to go into homeostasis. And so I'm coming back to how I started. My friend Gary was right all along. You don't really have to exactly understand an essential oil because once you use it, your body will know what to do it. Why? Because your body is full of receptors that are either here or not here, depending on the need in that second. And these plant compounds can go to these receptors and work on these receptors to create homeostasis and bring you back into balance. And the same is true for CBD. And especially when you combine the CBD with essential oils. So for me, this is homeostasis one drop at a time. I hope that after this lecture you better understand not just CBD, cannabidiol, but also all the other plants and the plant extract very concentrated such as essential oils and how they work in your receptors in your body. And these receptors are up or down regulated, meaning multiplied or diminished depending on the needs of your body, of your health and your wellness and your beauty. And this is why all these plants, including CBD and all these essential oils, are so important to work together with your body. And now you also understand the genius idea of combining a single substance, CBD, that has lost its entourage, basically, with other plant materials such as essential oils to recreate that entourage in a very smart way and targeted way. And that's exactly what CBD from Young Living is bringing to your home. And with that, I wish you all the best. I wish you health, fitness, wellness, and beauty. And I'll see you at the next lecture. Thank you. See you later.